Biogi is joining me to show you the before. So this is the little nook area. I have a little upcycle cabinet over there that has like some towels and stuff. Have a video on that and how to make the little curtain as well. And cute little teacup cabinet that I built as well. I'll pop in an insert to what was in here. But there was a lovely pink couch that I had gotten for free and I had chalk painted it like nine years ago. So it was time to also pass that on for free. And this is what's left. So I have another upcycle table. I'm actually gonna keep this, but I'll dismantle it. Then I have a rug and then these are all of the pillows and cushions. There was stuff behind the chair as well. So originally this nook, I wanted to do built-in storage here and I had ordered, but I thankfully was able to cancel it in time. I ordered an Ikea Be Besta, I think, unit. But see right here, there is nothing but uh, fresh air behind this top bit. So I was like, um, there is a little bit of storage here, but I asked my neighbor because it's not the same as the storage wall from a couple of videos back. It's not as deep over here. And there's also a lot of piping. And then this side, there is some electrics. So I was like, okay, I will scrap that idea for now. But my plan for this is I have some really nice wallpaper that has been sitting in my stash for like easily the whole of last year. So I'm gonna dig that out and I'm gonna add some paper to this nook and then I'm hoping to go thrifting and see if I can get a really, really nice uh, old wooden desk for here. Something that has nice chunky storage legs um, with a nice top so that I can put this here and have it as more of a functional space because when it was a seating area, it was an absolute waste of space for me. And yeah, it just looked nice, but I never sat on it. I never kind of did anything here and I don't have a proper makeup area and I'd like another desk to work from as well so that is my idea this is the wallpaper I love that it has we have a little foxglove got some insects very nature inspired now there was a wallpaper that I really really wanted but it was really really expensive pair roll and I was like oh I can't justify it but it's beautiful so I decided to have a look and see if I could find some similar so this one is the Jules easy hang wallpaper I hope it is going to be easy hang but oh hang on it's called Midnight Beasts in blush cream and Bon Hang on. I was wondering why I could hear a cat crying. I am sorry, my friend. I am sorry. I think this design of wallpaper, it's not too fussy. And the blush like looks nice next to this paint color. Oop, I am sorry. So this paint color here, when you have the two of them together, which you will see later in the video, it looks really nice. Before we put up that adorable wallpaper, let's do some prep. So I dismantled that table because I was thinking I'm more so keeping it for the legs. I don't know if I'll ever have it as a table again, but I was thinking it's always good to hang on to furniture legs because A, they can be expensive <laughs> and B, you never know when you're gonna come across a piece of furniture or a project and maybe you just wanna swap out the legs. So I'm hanging on to the legs and I also kept the top piece as well because it is a lovely thick wood. Um, I actually got this table from my neighbor again, same time as the chair, good nine, 10 years ago. And it originally was like this dark mahogany stain and I whitewashed and sanded the top and painted the legs. So it is a good wood. So I also need to give this area a little bit of a deep clean before I do some decorating because um, I couldn't tell you the last time I did a good clean here. Um, I definitely need to tackle the windows as well. But I just needed to clean down the walls and the skirting boards, 
just from Dust and Grime because this is one of the cat's many TV screens. They love jumping up and looking out the window. So sometimes there does be some paw prints on the wall. I have had some great ideas in the comment section from you guys with what to do with this space. A lot of people, and I think it's a really good idea, but I think I might do it downstairs in the living room is making like a, making a built-in seating area. I don't need another seating area up here. The previous version was a seating area and I never used it. I really do need a desk situation. But I do still have that nook in the living room and I think I could possibly do that idea down there instead. So I am in my hyacinth bouquet era of wallpapering. I just love floral wallpaper. I feel like I have a bit of wallpaper PTSD because I remember, and hands up who remembers this, I remember being a kid stripping wallpaper in my granny's living room and she used to have, so I think it was like a stripe bottom panel, a floral top panel of wallpaper. And then there was a strip that went around the middle and it was all wallpaper. Sometimes if I'm watching Mrs. Booker on telly, I'm like, oh, I just love her wallpaper choices. Very Laura Ashley. But um, I love a bit of wallpaper and I know some people are like, nah. And I know there's a bit of a trend at the moment for peel and stick wallpapers. But honestly, I find the paste the wall wallpapers are just as handy to stick up. Um, I like to use either a wallpaper steamer or someone actually gave a good suggestion before. If you need to remove wallpaper, uh, score the paper and spray, I think it is fabric softener in a bottle onto the paper, come back in 20 minutes and it will peel off. So I did have a video, some of you might remember it from last spring. I changed up the wallpaper in my living room and I absolutely love it. So I wanted to add a bit of pattern here as well. So let me know, are you a lover of wallpaper or do you prefer paint? I like a bit of both, I think. I am way more confident now when it comes to wallpapering because I tackled a good couple of jobs last year um, and I did my niece's bedroom as well. She got a beautiful Laura Ashley wallpaper. The girl has expensive taste for a six-year-old, or is she seven? She's gonna be seven this year, but she was six at the time. Of course she had to pick the expensive wallpaper. But anyway, um, this section was quite easy to do. I just had to snip around some corners at the windowsill and then there was the angle of this kind of bay window, uh, bungalow arched ceiling situation. So just take your time if it is your first time to do some wallpapering and always order an extra roll because you will see I actually ran out of wallpaper, which you will see later in the video. With wallpaper like this, there is a pattern repeat. So you do have to order extra to allow because you do kind of waste a little bit of paper matching up the pattern so allow for this when you are placing your order and then also try make sure you get the same batch numbers as well so if you're ordering online most of the wallpaper places will do this and make sure that you get the same batch number but just if you go into the hardware shop and you see wallpaper always make sure to match up the batch numbers and um, because there can be slight variations and you might not notice it until it's hung on the wall there might be slight variations and color and tone so yeah match up your batch numbers and just take your time um, I think this took me about two and a half three hours um I was kind of dilly-dallying in the middle as well so it is an easy weekend task to do but just give yourself extra time if you are a beginner
it comes to cutting into the wallpaper, some people will use a really sharp Stanley blade and a ruler. I love a, wall, a sharp wallpaper scissors. I feel like I have more control over the scissors versus the blade um, but this will probably just be personal preference. I do a lot of sewing so I'm kind of used to cutting fabric with a long scissors like the one that I'm using on this. Also don't use a fabric scissors to cut your wallpaper. Your fabric scissors is for fabric only. My sewing teacher always said that do not use your fabric scissors for cutting paper. It makes it blunt. But anyway back to wallpapering. So yeah if you're wondering why I'm using a wallpaper scissors versus a blade it's just because sometimes in the past when I have used the blade especially when the paper might be moist from the wallpaper glue when you glide it across you might get a little bit of a tear so I find that a scissors gives me a nice clean cut also I love and I've noticed that most wallpapers nowadays are but I love paste the wall wallpaper and I think a lot of a lot of us including me has a bit of fear of wallpapering because you just think of oh I have to get a wallpaper table out I have to put the paper on the table and it's rolling back up and I have to oh it's a bit, it feels like it could be a messy job I find the paste the wall wallpaper is easier I don't have to use a wallpapering table I just make sure the floor is clean and that it's long enough for me to roll out the piece of wallpaper and then cut off and get it ready to be put on the wall so what I do first is I will hang the roll of wallpaper next to the wall just to see roughly how much I need with a pattern repeat so I'll cut off the excess on top and I'll leave a bit more room on the bottom then I will paste the wall and then I will stick the wallpaper onto the wall and with the wallpaper paste you have a good amount of time for maneuver it's not going to stick straight away that's why I feel like the peel and stick wallpaper I feel like that could be quite fiddly because it's going to stick really sticky straight away to the wall I imagine. You do have plenty of time with wallpaper paste before it is you know fully set and don't worry if you have a, a bit of texture or bubbles even after wiping it down. Once you get most of them out your wallpaper does dry bubble free um, as the glue dries so if there is obviously big bubbles push them out but don't worry if there's a little bit of texture because once you push all of them out and your wallpaper glue has dried you will will have a nice smooth finish. Guess who miscalculated <laughs> the wallpaper that I needed? Me. <laughs> so this is this wall done. Really happy with that. Not too hard obviously the arch or not the arch, the angle. So I just use my finger to smooth it to cut it. So that is that wall done. And then we come around here. That is this wall done. But I do want to do this section because I just think even with putting a piece of furniture in here, I wanted this whole nook to be its own little kind of feature. So now <laughs> well, the downside to that is I obviously, I, when you're buying wallpaper, there's batch numbers. So you always try and get the same batch number so there's a pattern number there so I need to see if I can get this wallpaper I don't think B&Q in the UK have it but I don't think the Irish B&Q have this in stock because I went onto the website oh hang on I've locked the cats out hello so I need to email some wallpaper places that have this in stock and see if I can get the batch number. If I can't, listen, it's gone on that section there and there is hopefully going to be a lovely desk here. So I'm like, damn it, I really wanted to finish the job. All of these little pieces, because you have to pattern mash it, uh, they're tiny and I mean, you get away with using them for up here, but down here... Um, I have one length left but this takes four, four and a little bit drops down here. So I need to go on the laptop, <laughs> boys and girls, I need to go on the laptop and see if I can, well I'm going to clean up, call it a day on this and then it does look nice as you kind of come up the stairs 
and you look in and you see like that wallpapered nook, I think it will look really nice when, when it's like the whole thing papered. So yeah, I need to go and find one of the paper. Absolutely kills me to leave a job unfinished, but here we are. So I was feeling restless and a bit defeated because I really wanted to finish this corner. I hate having to leave something half done, but we move. I had a quick little Google because it was a Saturday evening as I was finishing this. And I decided I wanted to go over to B&Q because I knew that they did stock the Jules wallpaper, but I wasn't sure if they would have it in stock because I did look on the website and I couldn't find it. And I was like, maybe they might have some if I go over. I'm also on the hunt for some curtains and a curtain pole and just wanted to have a little look for some accessories too. Of course I could not resist the plants as I walked in. <laughs> they actually have some dahlias in stock and a good seed selection. So just FYI, I managed to resist this section. Um, everything here is from Liffey Valley and they're actually open until 8 o'clock in the evening. So I was like living my best wild Saturday night going down the aisles of B&Q. Unfortunately, they didn't have the wallpaper, but I was able to get a roll online from another shop. So that's going to be getting shipped out to me this week and I can finish off that corner. I did want to have a rummage around the wallpaper section as well. They actually had some of that Jules B wallpaper on sale. Now, I don't have anywhere for it, but I was like, oh, I do really like the B wallpaper. I think it's really, really cute. So that was half price and there was a couple of rolls left. And this is Liffey Valley, so if you're local, you might be able to go out and get them. They probably still have them in stock. Um, I'm filming this video quite close to the upload date, so they should still be in stock. I remember that I bought my niece's curtains here and they had a decent curtain selection and they weren't too expensive. So I needed a curtain pole and possibly a set of curtains. So I did manage to pick up a pole, but they didn't have any curtains that tickled my pickle. So I ended up, my friend Joanne gave me some curtain inspo, which I'll share later in the video. And I ended up finding a nice pair online. It's not often I allow myself to browse. I feel like when I'm going into the DIY shop, I know what I need to get. I'm in, I'm out, but sometimes it's really nice to just browse around and see what's in stock because sometimes I'll just make, even though I'm not like buying much, I'll just make a mental note. So sometimes like people might ask me if I've seen something um, or you know a nice, even if it's like a wallpaper or a tile, they might ask me for like advice in the comment section. So it's nice to yeah know kind of what's available in the shop sometimes. It's also good for getting ideas for other projects. So I feel like I'm always thinking ahead of something to do or a project um, and I might be looking for a specific you know material tile pattern who knows so yeah I like to just bank what I see so sometimes it's nice to go for a little browse. Hello I'm actually getting caught in the rain <laughs> hence why my hair looks this big. So first of all I was holding out before editing this video because I was hoping that my wallpaper roll would have arrived and I would have been able to finish that so at least I would have been able to show you the nook finish but we will have to just revisit this but I do have I want to show you Bon is on one of the mats that I got so I should be careful I don't stand on so I went into B&Q and I messaged my friend Joanne Joanne Condon because she's like curtain expert and I asked her I was like what length do you think I should do with the window I want to put a curtain on it I'm not mad on them blinds but they're grand for now they're great for like privacy um but I do want to dress the window and she sent me a picture of this like French curtain pole it was beautiful um and it had like a curve on it, it was brass I was like oh and she was sending me all these inspos inspo pics of like triple pleat curtains and all and I was like girl wow um, so I did pick up a, a brass curtain pole in B&Q. This is called Antiki, A-N-T-I-K-I, extendable curtain pole set. They did have individual brass ones. It just has a small round knob on the top. That's what she said. And because there's not much of a distance between the end of the wall and the window, I think there is like, 15 centimeters, I think. Um, I had to get a small knob for the top, yes. So 
I took her inspiration from the pic that she sent me and I got brass because I just think brass is beautiful. The curtain selection was not amazing in b and I did get Lily's curtains there for her bedroom makeover last year. So I, again, take an inspiration from what Joanne sent me. I got these ones, I actually got them on Amazon. And they are a linen-y. Also, I'm a weird, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna say weird, because I don't wanna offend people who are the same. I sleep with my curtains open. <laughs> and I always have, even as a kid. I think it's because I love waking up to natural light, but then in Ireland, during the summertime, like this will be five in the morning and just be getting bright, like we've long days in summer. But I love it. I don't even have a thing on my Velux window, but I love it. Um, so these are more for decoration, but they are, the cats are going to get these. They are the triple E. I don't think these are triple E. I think they're called pinch pleat. See the little pleat? So again, I this is Joanne and her inspiration. So, oh, hang on, the cats. Their cats are gonna climb up these. These, this wasn't too expensive because I know that the cats may climb up, which they're doing right now. I need to get a visual for you on this. So, actually, while I'm down here, I also picked up a mat just for the kitchen door, a uh, kibir, kibir, and it's a scraper doormat, but the cats love this as like a scratching mat, so it's two in one. Um, I made sure to get one with no design on it because the cats wreck it anyway. Um, but I got this uh, for the back door, for the back kitchen door, but it also doubles up as a scratching mat. So, will you test this out for me and leave my curtains alone? Can I get that little scratch? No, nope, my curtains. So I'm gonna have to try. Yeah, please. They'll get bored and move on to something else. He's trying to chew the curtain pole now. Now, the, I got these full length as well for the window and I know there's going to be a desk going in the front but I just thought this was quite nice. And also the curtain pole just slides through the back on these ones so you don't have to use all of the little hook things to stick in so you can just put the pole in the back. Okay, the other thing I got in B&Q was this cute little vinyl mat. Um, I don't know where I put my receipt, but it was just with the mats. It's like a vinyl piece of patterned, mosaic-y, pretty pattern. I'll insert a little clip of it here. Um, I bought that and I just put it at the entryway because I was like, that's actually really cute. Really cute. So what do we have to do next? We need to go thrifting and I'm after finding, remember in two videos ago I went thrifting in the St. Vincent de Paul furniture place in Navin and they had lots of stuff for upcycling but they didn't deliver and I was like okay but I have found a place that's a furniture warehouse and it's in Ballyfermot. It's the, I think it's the NCBI or the Age Action one and it's a big warehouse. So I think I'm gonna go over there and see if they have a nice pretty desk. There's two options. I was thinking if I find a really nice desk, look at this one. Plastic bags and cats. You'll suffocate yourself. Are you gonna get out of that? That could have been a bad accident there. Come on out of there. Look, your head up here. I've been having some behavioural issues with Bjorg, but I adore her. Pets really do teach her unconditional love, don't they? She can breathe, don't worry. Do you wanna get out? You happy there? Look at her little face. <laughs> Let me know when you're gonna, don't put your head back in. Please don't call animal welfare on me. I've lost my train of thought because of Bjorg. I was thinking if I was to see a really nice even an antique desk that didn't need much work to it. I think I would treat myself and buy it. 
or if I see a desk that's maybe, I don't know, orange pine, then I would happily buy it cheaper and give it a little upcycle. Um, I might just strip the wood back and restain it or I could do a mix of half paint, half whatever. I was looking at Ikea as well. There is a Hemnes desk, but I think I really want to get a nice wooden piece for this and make it like a really nice nook so that it's like both um, it's gonna be a dual space. It's another space where I can work lovely light in this room and also a makeup area as well. So it's giving me an extra space um, because when you work from home, it's nice to change up your space. As in, I make a mess downstairs, I come up, it's tidy and I can work here. So that is enough waffling for me. We will go thrifting and I will be back and we will revisit this space. If you're new to my channel, check out the recent videos if you like what you see. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Hit the sub button, cheeky thumbs up. And yeah, see you in the next one. And she's just bit my foot. Coming this spring, I am delighted to announce that my second book, Heart and Home, will be released this May, room by room. And whatever space you are in, I have crammed this book with DIY projects and knowledge to give you ideas for putting your heart into your home, whatever your budget.